Is it recording? So hi everyone, welcome to this tech talk. Uh, so I think first uh, Francesco is going to present us uh, the JupyterLab requirements UI. So Francesco, would you like to go on? Thank you, Maya. Um, yes, can I share my screen? Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, and find the correct tab. So, is it? Um, can you see my screen now? You see the document, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to uh, basically uh, use this topic here um, because uh, the UI seems to be one of the things that uh, is not that nice. And I know there are people expert in uh, UI and React. So it might be nice to show what is that we would like to do maybe. And uh, then if someone wants to contribute, we can go through through the steps if, if someone need, needs to know that. Um, so I opened this issue some times ago. Um, you know that UI at the moment is a bit uh, um, not nice, let's say, and there are other ways to do it. Um, there is an interesting uh, thing in JupyterLab, actually. Um, they are going to release the JupyterLab 4.0 and um, one of the features they are interested in is to have a python package manager ui and that means that if there is already an extension existing and uh, there is already something that can do what they are interested in uh, we could basically get into jupyter lab by default which can be nice um, could be that anyone can use any of the package manager so one could be taught if they want ppm um, of course, there is also Conda because there are also extensions for JupyterLab that uh, use Conda like uh, Mamba, so the lighter version of uh, Conda. Um, and this is an example, for example, of UI for managing uh, packages, which could also be interesting. So they have something uh, good, uh, maybe. And we could try to have something uh, similar but adapted to our use cases um so this is the the reason why it might be interesting to uh, start looking at improving that if you want of course to uh, reach also some uh, the jupyter lab community and maybe be maybe have something similar to what they are asking for so something to similar to blue s code but uh, again i'm not a UI, ui expert so uh, if someone wants to try and uh, develop something um, which is adapted to JupyterLab, that would be nice. Um, so I linked here also the other issue for Mamba examples and uh, related to the extension itself. Um, so JupyterLab has this repo where there are extension examples, not just for the uh, logic that runs in the extensions, but uh, also if you want to do something, uh, for example, with React, uh, there are other examples. Um, and so you can get inspiration on components that already exist there, because the idea is not to recreate everything from zero, because JupyterLab has uh, quite a lot of libraries for UIs, but uh, might be tricky to adapt them sometime. And so that is also something to consider. And contributing itself is uh, the same uh, uh, across all the extensions on, of JupyterLab. So what you need to do is to have Node.js um, in, in your machine, of course, by, the, uh, by default, and uh, Yarn to, to manage the um, JavaScript dependencies. And then it's uh, quite easy, I mean, uh, 
you just install the dependency, enter the, the environment, and uh, you install uh, basically the package locally in that environment. Uh, you need to en enable the extension so you can basically develop it and uh, at the same time it will uh, recompile that uh, automatically and to do that you basically open two terminals the first terminal just have uh, this command line from jupyter lab that uh, automatically basically run uh, tests and compile and uh, it rebuilds automatically so when you want to test your changes or just modify something in javascript or in typescript and then you reload uh, your browser and you will see the changes appearing there. And the other terminal, of course, you need to run Jupyter Lab. So that's how you basically work. If you want to contribute, you just need to install everything and run these two terminals and then you can modify the code and uh, you will see the changes. Um, Jupyter Lab requirements as the server side. So um, there is uh, some methods already if you want to interact with the uh, backend. So there is a method already that basically encapsulates all the logic. You just, uh, this is the, the basic one um, suggested by the JupyterLab community basically. And then on top of it, there are all the other uh, classes that we built uh, specifically for our extension. So if you need some specific new tasks, or new methods, you can just uh, add them on top of it. And related to the components of the UI, most of them are here. So there is the UI itself and uh, the tables and all the specific components that uh, comes with it. And right now it's just a dialog box. So when you click the button of the notebook, it will just open this dialog box and you can do these things. But um, that can definitely be improved and can definitely go into the direction of uh, um, matching some of the things that are interested by the community so they look for something similar like this and probably the one of uh, mamba is the closest one to the one uh, they are interested in so the tricky part is how to handle that uh, uh, per notebook because this uh, consider the kernels but it's not linked to any notebook, for example. So then you go to the notebook and you select the kernel you want. Uh, while our approach at the moment is we are in the kernel and we open the dialog box and we handle the kernel in that specific uh, notebook. So this is something that uh, uh, maybe can be also uh, just an extension. You know, it doesn't have to be exclusive or one or the other, but could be one of the two. And that's uh, it, I think. So if anyone has any questions or want some more information, uh, uh, let me know. Might be interesting to ask them if they want to provide uh, uh, like ability to write own resolution backend. So in other words, it will be an extension to their package manager. Uh, and uh, if the interface would be generic enough, they can uh, use Mamba, uh, Beep, Pipen, Fconda, and Tot can become one of them. So if they provide like generic interface, in which case they will ask uh, which packages and uh, the backend will resolve for them. I think that could be a nice integration point uh, because it could simplify uh, Todd's uh, addition to that. So basically separating the extension, right? Just having the UI and then you can install the package managers you want. Mm -hmm. But that is so, something that they have to do. Like you mean, uh, or we can do the UI and give them to them, give it to them, and they can adjust it. I don't know. Also, what they can do, they can do uh, package management in Jupyter Lab as they want, mm -hmm. and let the resolution uh, to be happened in a separate uh, extension. That would so the call would be 
imagine uh, someone clicks in JupyterLab like install requirements and will select uh, I want to install requirements using Conda. And then uh, the input will go to Conda uh, backend that will resolve uh, these requirements and will provide necessary parts to uh, JupyterLab uh, extension. And in that case, Mamba, Todd, Pipenv can uh, become just one of the resolution backends uh, to their extension. Uh, but that requires their uh, opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can uh, show up in one of these uh, planning meetings and uh, discuss about it because it seems like no one has taken taken over uh, this. So it won't be part initially of uh, the new Jupyter Lab 4.0, but it will go eventually there. So we can uh, maybe show up there and discuss this. And speaking of extensions and uh, integrations, it might be interesting to uh, check how, if someone is interested, how we can integrate with, with VS Code, because GitHub has very nice integration with uh, code like you can open code in your web browser and uh, that might be that people will start using it more and more often so if you want to have user base also in code it might be interesting to provide extension to uh, on, on that front as well okay yeah that sounds uh, very nice indeed um i think uh, we discussed with tom um tom uh, has some experience in vs code so if he wants to help us doing this it would be nice or if he, he, if you know like uh, you can also suggest uh, how to do it we can uh, work together on that i, would add I think api is is the right way to go about this uh, i totally like that idea and I think uh, if we can some to some degree make those APIs unified, it would make our lives much easier to support multiple frontends for all package resolutions. But I think maybe that's a fairy tale to ask for <laughs> from the beginning. So um, definitely um, we should spark these discussions, uh, start those discussions there, um, and implementing the front end for different IDs uh, will be trivial when we have an API. Um, yeah, so I mean, we can uh, start thinking about that and uh, show up also there. Um, yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, there are any other questions? Okay, let's go on then. Um, so, Francesco, can you? Um, Thank you. Yes, sorry. Can you stop? No, no. okay. <laughs> okay, can you see my screen again? Okay. Uh, so, what? Yes. Okay. Uh, so the next topic is uh, updates test database by Frito. So Frito, you want to go on? Uh, so uh, test environment is getting old, and we have still an like, old uh, database there that is not uh, updated. It's still running Python three six. So uh, if it would be updated to one of the stage dumps with Python 3.8, just for testing, which uh, could be good. I don't know what are the requirements when it comes to uh, size and if we can fit it. Oh, we can try that. Uh, uh, we had three days old, all the batches, so we can try, like, because we have a lower uh, value in there. Uh, it should be something less than 32 gigabytes, uh, or I think 16, 16, 30, 32 between them. So I'll check and uh, we can modify that. 
Okay, it's okay. Okay. Uh, any questions? Anything to add? Okay, so I think that's the last topic for today. So, do anyone have anything to add besides that? Okay, so thanks for attending the talk and see you. <laughs>